On behalf of Pastor and Lady Ming and the Retrieve Your Life family, we welcome you to Retrieve Your Life Ministries, a church that is looking up, reaching out, and caring for all. Let's join today's service, which is already in progress. Good morning. Good morning. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I just invite you to be glad today. Amen. Amen. Praise him while we still have a chance, because we don't know we might not have a chance this evening, so we might as well pray from this morning. Amen. 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 Father God, we come to you this morning with a bow down head and humble hearts, Heavenly Father, we ask you. First of all, Lord, I want to thank you for being so awesome, Heavenly Father. You are Alpha and Omega, Heavenly Father. Lord, we give you the highest praise, and that's hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you. You're just an awesome God. Heavenly Father, I'm so glad that you don't need any help to do what you want to do, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord, because you're so awesome. Lord, I come to you, Heavenly Father. I ask you to forgive us of everything that we have done up until this moment that was not of you. Yeah. Heavenly Father, I ask that you bless each and every person in here, Heavenly Father. From the sole of their feet to the crown of their head, Heavenly Father, I ask that you touch each and every mother that's in here, Heavenly Father. Give them just a little bit more of you, Heavenly Father. Those that have children, let them pass your word on to them, Heavenly Father. Lord, from the minds of the babies, Heavenly Father, Lord, I want to thank you for the children, Lord, because they are our next, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you on this morning, Heavenly Father, for waking us up with sound minds, Heavenly Father, because somebody didn't wake up, Lord. Lord, I thank you this morning, Heavenly Father. We got the activities of our limbs, Heavenly Father. Because somebody couldn't move this morning, Heavenly Father. You didn't have to do it, Lord. We don't deserve anything that you do for us, Lord, but you just keep on giving, Heavenly Father. And I just want to say thank you right now, Lord, because you just keep on giving, Heavenly Father. Lord, I ask that you go into every church, Heavenly Father, that open and didn't open in your name, Heavenly Father, and touch each and every person in there, Heavenly Father, and their ministry, Heavenly Father. Let them not deviate from the word that you have prepared to go forward, Heavenly Father. Lord, let there be ears to listen and hearts to understand the, the message that's going forward on this day, Heavenly Father. Lord, I ask you to go into the nursing homes and touch and heal, Heavenly Father. Lord, I ask you to bless each and every person that has lost a loved one, Heavenly Father. Send the, send the comfort of Heavenly Father. Lord, I ask you as this day go forth, Heavenly Father, I ask that we just keep you with us, Heavenly Father, and keep blessing our minds, Heavenly Father. Let us give a little bit more of you, Heavenly Father. Touch us, Lord. Touch us right now, Heavenly Father. Touch our hearts, Heavenly Father. Somebody has a, a aching heart right now, Heavenly Father. Somebody need deliverance right now, Heavenly Father. Somebody just need a word from you, Heavenly Father. Lord, I ask that you touch that person right now and reintroduce yourself, Heavenly Father. Lord, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, for dying on the cross, Heavenly Father. Lord, let us accept him, Heavenly Father. Just give us a little bit more of Jesus, Heavenly Father. Lord, I want to thank you. For all these prayers in your son Jesus' name, amen. Amen. How many of y'all got an alabaster How many of y'all got an alabaster How many of y'all know the cross? Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, How many know the cross? Yes. You ought to be grateful. You ought to be shouting to the heavens. Thank you. And be ready to pour out the oil. Thank you. On the yes. mouth. How many ready to wipe somebody's feet with their hands? Let her hair down. Come on now. 
Yeah. It was illegal. It was improper. Mm -hmm. But here was a woman. She wasn't worried about the cost. She wasn't worried about what was going to happen to her. She just poured that oil over the master, and then she let down her hair. I don't know if it was Brazilian or what, but I know it wasn't no weed. Yes. And she wiped his feet. Yes, yes. With her hair. Thank you, Lord. Total service. How many of y'all ready to serve the Lord this morning? How many of y'all ready to make that kind of sacrifice for somebody else? Because you don't know the cost. I'm telling you, how many of y'all got an alabaster box this morning? Come on now. Come on now. There's a whole bunch of y'all got a bunch of alabaster boxes in your house. All right. Uh -huh. Amen. Jeez. Got some, got some, you know, y'all going by that uh, $100 Chanel, number five, it might be $100, $150, $200, I don't know how much it costs. <laughs> Ain't nothing about nothing. <laughs> but will you be willing to pour that over the master's head? Come on now. And wipe his feet with your hair. Now, I know some of you saying, well, pass my hair too short. Then, you know, we just, just cut some off and wipe his feet with it. <laughs> <laughs> Your alabaster box. Cause that, was a, that, was a, that was a great cost yes, for us to have what we have. Yes. The freedom that you have. Yes. The, 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 the ability to be, re, be redeemed from your sins. Mm. The ability to go in and ask God for forgiveness. That was a cost. Yes. Amen? Amen. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Oh, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Yes, yes. You know, it's, 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 uh, we're getting ready to roll into spring, you all. Amen. Amen. You know, y'all see y'all, y'all coming, y'all breaking out the spring clothes and everything. <laughs> you know, everybody, you know, they're coming out, they're breaking out their spring clothes. You know, next time we be sending a whole bunch of, uh, uh, them, 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 them little, them little, I ain't gonna say you weave, but you're gonna sell both bunch of that Brazilian hair up in there. <laughs> with them, with them, what they call them things, braids, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Too fit. <laughs> you know, but I, I'm telling you right now, you know, so everybody needs some braids. Hey, who, who gonna get their hair braided this song? Hey man, I got y'all. Y'all come see me, 250, I'm knocking it down to 175. <laughs> <laughs> I'll hook you right on up. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yeah, laughing like I'm not breathing on her. <laughs> It'd be a new style, though. <laughs> Amen. 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 Always good to be in, uh, in God's house. It's always good to be in His house, whether it's warm, cold, it don't matter. The, the, the comfort of the house of the Lord is always here. Yes, yes. yes. Amen. 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 And y'all know how we do it at YLM. While staying with his grandma in the country, little Johnny was asked to go down to the lake to, to, and fetch some water so that grandma could cook. So as he waded in a few feet and lowered the buck, he saw two big eyes looking back at him from across the pool. So he immediately dropped the bucket and he dashed back to grandma's kitchen. Where's my bucket and where's my water, asked the grandma. I can't get any water from the water hole, grandma blurted Johnny. There's a big old alligator down there. <laughs> Oh, don't worry about that old alligator boy. He's been there for years now. He's never hurt no one. Why, he's probably as scared of you as you of him. Well, Grandma replied, Johnny, if he's as scared as I am, then that water ain't fit to drink. <laughs> Amen. Watch the water you drink when you ask a child to go get you some water. <laughs> Amen. Cause you know most of y'all done went here asked somebody to go get y'all some water and don't know if it came from the toilet or not. Cause they couldn't reach the sink. Right. They just got you some cold water. Amen. I remember I did that one time. My grandmother told me that story. I did that to one of her uh, friends. They used to always come over to my grandmother's house to play bread and we stayed with my nerve. When I was a little boy, she asked, told me, they asked me, one of the ladies asked me to go get her a cold drink of water. I went and got a cold drink of water. I, the only place I knew where to go get it. My grandma said, you came back and said, what did she ask me? She said, where did you get that water? And I said, I pointed to the bathroom store. And she said, in the sand? I said, no, right there. But it was cold. It was cold. Amen. It was cold. It was cold. So praise the Lord. And watch what you ask the child to do. Right. <laughs> Amen. Say it like you mean it. This, this is, is my Bible. Bible. This, this is my God. God. The word of God in whom I will trust. Amen. Amen. 
Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we stand before you this morning, Lord. We just ask that you just nurture us with your word this morning. Give us guidance. Give us truth. Give us proof. Let us be obedient and receptive to the word of God this morning, oh God. Now, let me, Lord, let me stand behind the cross and let me decrease as you increase in me. These are all things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Emmanuel. 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 If you would turn your Bibles to the book of Malachi. The last book in the Old Testament. So, so you ain't got far to go. I'm, I'm getting you. I'm letting you know where you go. The last book in the Old Testament. The first book before the New Testament. Amen. Before Matthew. Malachi chapter 3. Go to verse 8. Malachi chapter 3. Starting at verse 8. Malachi chapter 3. Starting at verse 8. Amen. Amen. Malachi chapter 3, starting at verse 8. Malachi chapter 3, verse 8. Last book in the Old Testament. All you have to do is go to Matthew and go back one book. Amen. And I'm reading out the NIV this morning. Matthew, uh, Chapter 3, starting in verse 8. <clears throat> Will a man rob God? Yet you rob me. But you ask, how do we rob you? In tithes and offerings. We've got some smart people out here this morning. You are under a curse, the whole nation of you, because you are robbing me. Bring the whole tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so many blessings that you will not have room enough for it. I will prevent pests from devouring your crops, and the vines in your fields will not cast their fruit, says the Lord Almighty. Then all the nations will call you blessed, for yours will be a delightful land, says the Lord Almighty. You may be seated in the presence of God. Briefly this morning, I want to talk to you all about giving with integrity. Giving with integrity. We have all met people who lack integrity, haven't we? Some lack moral integrity. Others lack integrity in their business dealings. There are even some pastors who lack integrity because they do not practice what they preach. The Jews of Malachi's day, they lack integrity in the area of giving to God's work. And many today lack integrity in this same area. Remember, a lack of integrity is also a lack of honesty. Amen. Amen. And obedience. Amen. Because we should be obedient to the word of God. A lot of people, you know, we, we, we call ourselves obedient to God, but we don't really follow and do what the word of God tells us to do. We start doing our own thing. That's right. And you know, when we start doing our own things, things just don't always go right, do they? This morning, I just, you know, God put this on about giving with integrity. And point number one I want to look at is, in verse 8, we want to talk about the first point is God's accusation. God's accusation. Because he said, will a man rob God? Yet you rob me. How many crooks we got out here this morning? Come on now. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Because you know we got some robbers out here. Amen. See, don't nobody want to call, you know, when I say crook, everybody, I ain't no crook. Oh, yeah, you're a crook. Come on now. You're a dirty crook. Yeah. <laughs> Every last one of them, from the pulpit to the door. To the door. Because we've all robbed uh, God. Come on now. <laughs> Including me. Here I was, thought I was doing, hey, I was doing all right with my tithing and everything. Until I found out yesterday when we was at the class yesterday that a whole bunch of y'all missed. <laughs> and when I found out some things about tithing, I had to reevaluate my own self. All right. All right. Me too, sir. Because how many of you, man, just be honest, how many of you tithe, when you tithe, how many of you tithe off your net? <laughs> you know, that, that's one of the you know what you get on your paycheck. Oh, yeah. Yes. But how many of you tithe off your gross? Yeah. 
before they start taking out their taxes and everything. That's where you start. That's where you're supposed to take off and give to God. And I had to reevaluate and I had to re recalculate my own tithes and, and, and redo them. <laughs> had to make sure he got his 10. Right. It looked like I was giving him 95. All right. <laughs> Not 100%. Come on now. So, it's okay. Because here we are, we're talking about this tithing thing and giving with integrity. And people, are, uh, God is accusing us because we robbed him. He's accusing us because we're crooks. Mm -hmm. Yes. And God even asks you the question personally, will a man rob God? All mm -hmm. mm -hmm. right now, yeah. And a lot of people say, no, not me. I love God too much. <laughs> and God told you, yet yeah, you rob me. Yes, you do. And you say, well, then how am I robbing you then? Come on now. And tithes and offerings. Because a lot of folks just tithe. Come on now. What about your offering? It says you go to tithe and offer. That included me too. I had to reevaluate myself on that one. Amen. Mm -hmm. So I had to throw an offering in there this morning. <laughs> <laughs> because he said, he tells us in the word. He, he is accusing us. You know, the Jews robbed God. Amen. And I guess we say, well, if the Jews robbed him, how come we can't? Right. <laughs> so I guess you're going to wind up where the Jews did then. Come on, man. <laughs> Because they failed to give God as prescribed, as he commanded. See, God didn't ask us come on, come on, all right, all right. to tithe and offer. He, he commanded us. Teach it. If you go back, I'm, I'm going to go back to verse 7. He said, ever since the time of your forefathers, you have turned away from my decrees and have not kept them. Mm -hmm. We ain't the only one that has not tithed. All right. And then he said, Return to me and I will return to you, said the Lord Almighty. But you ask, how are we to return? Now, I just talked to you about tithes and offers. And he said, how am I to return? God has already forgiven you if you want to start at waking up today and start doing the right thing by your tithes and your offerings. Amen. See, you're being accused and you know you're wrong and you know you're guilty. Come on, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. See, don't nobody want to hear about that when we start talking about money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and don't come to me talking about, I'm going I'm to tithe my time. You a lie. Don't, don't tithe no time. You can't tithe no time, no time, no time. <laughs> <laughs> and anybody that didn't told y'all that, tell them I told them they are a lie. Amen. <laughs> That's not what the word says. That's right. The word didn't say nothing about tithing your time. Come on now. You can't bring your time to the storehouse. All right. Your time can't pay no bill. All right. Amen. Your time should be freely given to the Lord. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Amen. Yes. So everybody want to get paid. Janitors want to get paid. Yes. Yeah. Singers want to get paid. Yes. Yeah. Musicians want to get paid. Yes. Preachers want to get paid. Everybody want to get a paycheck. Yes. But don't nobody want to tie. Hmm. And don't nobody want to offer. Hmm. And we can go a step further and, and talk about alms. Uh-uh. So you don't see that anywhere, but you're supposed to give alms also. And alms is given to the poor. Oh. You know, like some of y'all do, y'all just give out your pocket, you see somebody on the street or whatever, and give. Amen. That's your arms. Oh. But when you when you when you come to church, you pull a tithe and offer. Come on now. Teach us. God is accusing you this morning. Mm -hmm. Guilt. <laughs> As charged. You know, I'm just so glad that God didn't give us a life sentence. Come on, Amen. Amen. And then he forgive because he said, <laughs> you can return to me, says the Lord Almighty. I'm so glad he's a, a forgiving God. Mm -hmm. That he gives us an opportunity to get it right. That's right. Because he, he, he said you return to me, and he told you if you will, you rob me. And you said, how am I robbing you? And he said, your tithes and your offers, but I'm letting you, I'm giving you an opportunity to get it right. Amen. Come on. 
So I'm trying to teach you this morning from the word of God and what God is saying that, you know, when you start tithing, take your top, your tithe off the top. Right. Don't wait till you take out your gas bill money, your electric bill money, your car note money, your mortgage money, or your rent money. Take your money, take God's money off the top. Then you read about the rest of them folks after that. Mm -hmm. All right. If you make $3,000 a month, bro, you take that $300 off the top and put it over there for God. Now, when the last time anybody here was not able to pay their bills, just didn't have it to pay. But uh, uh, somehow, some money came away. And it came your way, I mean. And God's always been in the blessing business. Even when you think you don't have, God makes a way. Yes. We're always talking about, he can make a way out of no way. But he makes a way. I don't care where it came from, he made a way. Yes. You hear what I'm saying? Yes. So when you give it to God, <laughs> because he done told us, I'll take care of you. That's right. I think in the book of uh, Philippians with Paul, what Paul told us that God said that I will supply all your needs. Uh -huh. According to his riches and glory. Yes. Mm. All of your needs. Mm -hmm. If I tell you I'm going to supply all your needs, you mean to tell me you can't give me what, what is mine? Come on, man. And on top of that, it's not like I asked you for 50%. Mm. I didn't even ask for half. Mm. Jesus. Mm. I asked for a measly 10% mm. of your earnings. Mm. And we act like that's too much. That's right. What is too much for God? Nothing. Because without him, you wouldn't have been able to have the job or the money to pay your tithes in the first place. You didn't get that job by yourself. You're not making that earnings by yourself. That's right. It's time to wake up. You're being accused this morning. All right. Point number two, God's action. And verse number nine, he, 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 check this out. He said, <laughs> you are under a curse. Mm -hmm. And in my Bible it says the whole nation of you, but I'm going to change that. Look. No, I ain't going to change. I'm gonna, I ain't going to mess with your word, God. I ain't going to mess with your word. The whole nation of you. And he's talking about the whole nation. He's talking about all of us. Ain't just talking about retrieve your life. Ain't just talking about St. Louis. He's talking about everybody. The whole nation. Because there's there so many people today in church. They're not tithing. They're not doing right by God. That's right. That crook down. <laughs> <laughs> Going to ask his church. I need 200,000 of my members to donate $300 so I can get me a $65 million plane. <laughs> the devil is a lie. Because that to me, see, I'm so tired of men and women pimping God's people. Come on now. I would, I would love to have a little jet too. But I'm not going to ask the congregation to buy it for me. If it's meant for me to have, God will make a way. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And now that is, I'm going to tell you, I believe they're going to give it to them. Amen. Amen. But praise the Lord. But I wonder how many of them are going to be able to use it. On, Since it belongs to the ministry, as he says. See, it ain't in his name. It's in the church's name. But how many of the church members are going to be able to use it to go on their uh, 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 vacation? Uh, Pastor, I want to do some ministry over in Africa. Can I use the jet? Oh, well, you know, it's down this week. <laughs> Being repaired. <laughs> $65 million for a jet, and it's the fastest jet in the in the world. $65 million. Can you, I just can't even fathom that. And, 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 and here's God's action, talking about the cursed nation. $65 million, you ask for $65 million to buy a jet, and you got people in your congregation starving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You got people in your congregation that got their lights off. Come on now, teach. Can't pay their gas bill. Mm. Don't even have a car. Come on. But come to church every Sunday. Yeah. And ties to you. Mm. Mm. How come you can't take that 65 and start buying people cars and buying people houses and paying big? Come on, come on, man. 
We got a whole nation that's cursed because of their failure to give. Everybody, you know, and I'm so I, I, I'm, I'm so I'm so angry that everybody want to talk about preachers and say y'all all alike. That's a lie too. I'm so tired of people telling me I'm like everybody. I'm not like them crooks. Amen. <laughs> Cause ain't nobody bought me no legit. Come on now. <laughs> I ain't even asked for a car. Come on now. I love to have Mercedes Benz, but I'm not gonna ask the church to buy me one. Yeah, I'm gonna buy me one. <laughs> <laughs> God's action. You are under a curse, the whole nation, because you are robbing me. When you rob God, you fall under a curse. Yeah. See, and this is what this is what this is the killing This is what gets me. Then people only want to understand why, why am I going through so much? Why am I always going through? Because you ain't doing right by God. You a robber. You a thief. And you are under a curse. Every Sunday when you come to church and don't do right by God, and then something happens to you next week, you like, oh, car that broke down. Oh, wonder why. <laughs> Had a flat tire. Oh, wonder why. Nah. Ran out of gas, ain't got no gas money. Oh, I wonder why. Uh. But you had money to pay tithes on Sunday, and you decided to keep it. Then you lost it because you went on the boat to try to double it. Uh -oh. <laughs> I'm going I'm to double my money. <laughs> you know, I'm going to double this money. I, I, I'm going to make this money grow. Come on now. And they don't know how to play craps, but they're going out there anyway. Not knowing that the dice out there are already loaded. Uh -oh. All right, all right. I ain't trying to talk about the casino. <laughs> Truth is. <laughs> Come on now, Pastor. You can't win. They only, they only let you win to keep you, keep you, keep you playing. Right, yeah. right. Amen. And then people tell me, oh, they just lucky. No, ain't, ain't, ain't no such thing as luck. It's just a coincidence. And, you know, God bless you a little bit. And see, when he blessed you, that was your opportunity when God said, get up and move. Come on now. But no, you know how we do. <laughs> oh, put it on number 10, let it ride. And it comes up nine black. <laughs> six and eight, Pastor. Six and eight. Amen. Whatever. You know, I just, 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 just know I don't even gamble. Six and eight, them are your best numbers. Six and eight. That's a gamble. <laughs> if you're playing roulette, she say six and eight, them are your best numbers. I don't, I don't know. No, that's crap. That's crap. Craps, craps <laughs> whatever. Amen. I'm just going to do it the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> With that 10, 9, 5. <laughs> <laughs> and so you know I ain't no gambler, amen. <laughs> I just play a little lot of weird now and then. <laughs> Trying to build a church. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 Right. We ain't gonna win no money and then talk about building no church with no lottery money. Mm -hmm. The devil is a lot of just <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Got my teeth in Hebrews chapter 11 right now. Got that thing, baby. Got that thing. But we cursed. Yes. We are so cursed because we don't do the right things by God. That's right. Because we continue to rob God. And we don't even know we're robbing God. And some of us know we're robbing God and just don't care. Uh -huh. Come on now. We'll come to church anyway, put in our three, four dollars. Come on. And say we, we did our duty. Uh -huh. Then when you die and, and think you going to heaven because you was in church every day, every Sunday, and put in your three, four. Uh -huh. And God says you can't get in. And you want to, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold up, bro. What you mean? I was there every Sunday and put some money in the plate. <laughs> but you didn't do your 10% plate like I, like I asked you to. I told you, will a man rob God? 
You robbed me every day you were down there. <laughs> and then you want to get in my house? I'm not letting no thieves in there. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's like giving your keys to a crackhead and say, go on for it. Right. <laughs> Point number three. I know y'all getting tired of me with actions. Oh. God's advice in verse 10. In verse 10, he said, bring the whole tithe. Check this out now. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. I'm going to stop right there. The one who is not given properly just also start to give, start giving with integrity because we're talking about giving with integrity this, integrity this morning. People need to start giving with integrity. People need to start willingly give. Yes. The Bible says you you receive freely, you should give freely. Now, how, how many of y'all, uh, if someone is walking to you right now and gave you three or four hundred dollars, you're gonna receive it freely? Am I am I right about it? Right. Right. Amen. If I came down to somebody right now and put $400 in your hand, I guarantee you 40 ain't coming back. Mm. I'm going to give it back. I give it back. They're going to put 20 in there. They're going to hold that up 20. What you say? $40. Man, I'm talking about 400 and give him 40. That's 360. I'm going to have 380 left. Come on now. We have to learn to give back to God and give willingly. We have to have a willing heart to give. Mm -hmm. How many of y'all willing to give to God this morning? Amen. 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 Willingly. Yes. Freely. Yes. Without somebody trying to bend your own. Come on, man. Then we wonder why. I'm telling y'all, we wonder why. He said, <clears throat> bring the tithes to the store. He didn't, he didn't say, uh, can you bring some of the tithes this week? to the storehouse when we run a little low. Can you just bring some, you know, a, a, a third or a, a something. Just bring a little bit of something, something. No, he said bring the tithes to the storehouse so that it may be food and, check this out, he said, my house. He didn't say nothing about your house. He said, in my house. Then he goes on and he tells us, he said, this is what I love about God. He said, test me in this. Come on now. You hear what I'm saying? God, God said, he gonna, he gonna, it's, it's like a dirt. Test me in this. In other words, he's telling you, tithe and test me and see what I do for you. Come on now. I'm here to tell you, I'm a living testimony. Thank I'm here to tell you this morning, baby, if you tithe, you don't have nothing but blessings coming. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm, a, I, I, I'm a living testimony. Amen. I will pay my tithes because I know God is good and God is able and God will. Mm -hmm. I've been blessed. Mm -hmm. I can't complain about nothing. And see, your blessings is not always money. Let's get, let's, let's get that off the top. When God blesses you, it's not always just because you paid your child to put in three or four hundred dollars, that don't mean you're gonna get six, seven, eight hundred dollars back. That's right. That's Amen. Right. Your blessings can come in anything. You may have a sick child, mm -hmm. and God heals him. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Maybe something wrong with your car or anything, and God makes a way for it to get, get properly repaired. Mm -hmm. And check this out. Don't even cost you a dime. Mm -hmm. Ain't God good? Yes. Well, how about that flat you got on the highway, and ain't nobody, you don't know how to change no tire, and you in that bow all by yourself, and you left your cell phone at home. Mm -hmm. But a total stranger stops by that God sent all right. All right. to fix your tire to get you on your way. That's right. Another blessing. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me God is not able. Because he tells us, test me. Yes. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty. And see if I will not, see that right. See if I'm not throw open the floodgates. He didn't say, he didn't say, I'm just going to open up a door. No. He said, I'm going to open up the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have room enough for it. See, he got a whole bunch of blessings stored up for all of us. Yes. Each and every one of us, he got blessings stored up and stored up and stored up, but he can't give them all to you right now because you couldn't handle it. Right, That's right. Come on, man. If he gave, he gave every last one of us all the blessings he's had in store for us, we'd be broke as a joke and tore up because we're going to mess it up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why 
why you need the time. He tells you what, I, what he has in store for you. He tells you what he has waiting for you. And people will sit here today and they will say, yeah, whatever, preacher. You know, you, 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 ain't, you ain't in my house. You, 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 don't, you don't pay my bills. You don't know what I you don't know what I got going on. Baby, let me tell you something. I don't know what nobody got going on. But all I can tell you about is what the Lord said he will do. And if you don't, if you don't want to believe me, believe in the Lord. Come on now. You don't have to believe what's coming out of my mouth, but read the word for yourself. And believe in the Lord and what he's saying. He tells you, I will not, I will throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so many blessings that you will not have room enough for it. You won't have room enough for it. Do you know what that means? Yes. This is God's advice to you, you all. Give with integrity. And I will pour out so much to you, you couldn't have that you can't handle it. I'll take care of you. All I'm asking you and commanding you to do is tithe mm -hmm. and offer. And people miss that each and every Sunday. Trying to hold on to that little bit. That's God blessed you with a job. You got your paycheck. But see, if you had to went out to the club and spent $100 like you're a baller. Oh. Buying shots for everybody. <laughs> Patron and, and 1800 and everything. Oh, shots for everybody. Ah. <laughs> then you get the bill. You know, that, 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 that 100 could have paid your tithes. Or some of us. Amen. Amen. Then you come to church Sunday, still, you know, you still love, love, love under the weather. <laughs> and you ain't got no money for the tithes. See, that's what I understand. You can give all your money to the club, come on. but you can't give nothing to God. Come on. When you're down and out, the club ain't going to be there for you. That's right. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Let me, let me just say it again, because I, I think that went over y'all here. When you're in the club and giving them all your money, but when you start going through some things, the club don't even know you. Come on, man. Right. Matter of fact, they don't even know you when you're there giving them, giving them your Come money. On now, okay. That's right. But here in the house of the Lord, it's like cheers, baby. <laughs> Where everybody knows your, your name. name. <laughs> <laughs> we got known. Hey, Amen. Come on, man. We got clear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got Fraser. <laughs> we got them all. Where everybody knows your name. Mm -hmm. In the house of the Lord. Because here in the house of the Lord, where you'll find your support. That's right. Where you'll find help. Mm -hmm. Here over at the club, at the peak slip. <laughs> <laughs> See, you done went out there and paid, you know, with them, with them singles. Mm -hmm. Then you decide, you know, you want to act like you Lil Wayne and start throwing right. out teens and twenties. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All for a lap dance. Mm. <laughs> Tell you something, you better sit down in the lap of the Lord. <laughs> that's the only lap you need to be sitting in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sitting in the lap of the Lord because let me tell you, that's the only one that's going to hold you tight and never let go. All right. yes. And it ain't going to cost you a dime. All right. Hey, hello, somebody. Hello. Go to the pig slip and, and, and let one of them sit on your lap and say, if it ain't going to cost you nothing. Ask them if it's free. <laughs> Can I get a free lap dance? Oh, it's free. Please. Oh, please. Oh, <laughs> How many of y'all got lap dance? Ain't nobody going to raise their hand. <laughs> Go, <laughs> 
Amen. Long, long time ago. I, I, I think I was 20 in my 20s. I was up in, I was up in Canada. Amen. Uh -oh. And they had this woman dancing. Uh -oh. Amen. 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 Come on, God. Come on, God. Yeah. <laughs> I'm talking about God's advice. We didn't get all the scriptures. <laughs> Woo, bring me back there, Lord. <laughs> oh, ain't nothing like being real. Right. <laughs> Keep it all in the storehouse. <laughs> give it properly, you all, so start to give with integrity. That's, that's all I'm trying to tell you. We got to start giving with integrity. And the last point, uh, I'm going to let you go home, God's assurance. Mm -hmm. Because also in, in verse 10, it's still right there in verse 10, when he tells about when he was going to throw over those floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that he would not have, you would not have room up for it. God, God is going to give great blessings when we give properly. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm talking to retrieve your life right now because I know we have visitors. God will give us great blessings when we give properly. I, I hope y'all hearing what I'm saying. <laughs> we looking at talking about expanding, building a new sanctuary. God will give us great blessings when we give properly. I hope y'all hearing me. I hope y'all listening to me. Stop being stingy with your money. Yes. I'm just gonna call it like it is. Stop being stingy to the with the Lord. God has been God has been so good to you for you to be stingy with Him. And then think about it. Then think about it this way: even and as stingy as you are, He still keeps on blessing you. Amen. And that's no reason for you to stay stingy either, because there's going to come a time where you're not going to be blessed. Or you're going to like like we already told you: you're going to be cursed. You're going to walk around cursed because you're not doing what God commanded us to do. But I'm telling you right now, God's assuring, God has assured us what he will do. Amen? Amen. He done told you he'll open up the floodgates of heaven and pour out so many blessings that you won't be able to handle. He done, he done gave us that assurance. How many of y'all believe God this morning? Yeah. How many believe that God is able and that he will pour out many blessings in your life? y'all are recipients of God's blessings. Yeah. Because God is able. Yeah. Wait, let me tell you something. And, and I normally don't say this, but I'm in love with a man. Mm -hmm. And it ain't the same to see. Come on, yeah. I'm in love with a man like no other. I love this man with everything in me. Yeah. All right. It ain't nothing I wouldn't do for this man. Come on, man. I love this man so much there's not nothing he'd ask me that I won't do. Come on. Because I have that much love for this man. Mm -hmm. I love him from inside and outside. Mm -hmm. Hmm. His name is Jesus. Yes. His name is Jesus. Yeah. And I want to be one of those that give with integrity. I want to be the, one of those that's going to receive the blessings of the Lord. Yeah. I'm going to be one of those that's going to be the example for this congregation, where a, a prime example to give freely. Yeah. With integrity. Yeah. Willingly. Mm -hmm. Properly. As God has commanded. I hope y'all join me in this. I pray that y'all join me in this. That you start looking over and looking at, looking at your life and re-examine yourself. On your tithes and your offerings. Amen. 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 Emmanuel. Emmanuel.